Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how you can start selling completely custom made products using AliExpress and Shopify. And you're gonna be able to look over my shoulder and be able to start your e-commerce store from scratch, selling these custom handmade products completely from beginning to end. So I'm gonna be going through the pros and cons of selling custom products. I'm gonna be showing you some different custom products that you can start selling with your very own e-commerce store. And then I'm gonna be showing you how you can actually start building your e-commerce store, going through from picking your domain and connecting your domain to creating your homepage, creating all of the necessary pages, such as the contact us and shipping policy, ensuring that your store is completely mobile responsive, making sure that your customers can go and customize the products by uploading images, adding text, picking different colors, and then I'll be showing you how to fulfill those orders. And finally, I'll be showing you how you can go and create video ads so that you can start marketing your store using Facebook, Pinterest, and loads of different other marketing platforms. So make sure that you watch the entire tutorial and I hope you do enjoy the video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up and without further ado, let's begin the tutorial. So firstly, let's look at the pros and cons of dropshipping custom products on Shopify. So firstly, the pros, you have more unique products, which means it's easier to get customers as opposed to dropshipping in the normal method where you just choose a product from AliExpress and dropship it. You could have hundreds, if not thousands of other stores all dropshipping the same product as you. So that makes it more competitive and that makes it more difficult for you to actually go and acquire customers because you've got so much competition. Whereas when you are dropshipping custom products, they are custom made for that customer. So that makes it easier for you to acquire a customer because there is less competition. Next up, it's the shipping times. So generally when you are drop shipping a product from AliExpress, a customer having to wait 30 to 40 days for that product can be really frustrating for them, but they're more accepting when they are waiting for a custom product that comes within 30 to 40 days because it is being custom, it is being handmade specifically for them. They've uploaded an image or they've uploaded their name, so it is specifically made for them. So if it takes 30 to 40 days to arrive, they're a little bit more accepting of that because it is a completely custom product. And thirdly, under the pros is you are building along term brand because you can actually get repeat customers like this if they really enjoy the product they might refer you to their friends to their family they might buy more from you as gifts of these custom products whereas if you're drop shipping just a normal product then generally they're probably just going to buy once and if the shipping times are long they're probably not going to buy from you again or they only just need the product once whereas with a custom product like i said they might buy it for their friends for their family or they might refer you if they really enjoy the product now the cons of course it is more difficult to fulfill these products so that can be very time consuming especially if you're doing a product where you have to upload an image because then you have to go and send this image over to the supplier and then they're going to go and put it on the product and get it sent out to the customer so you can't do one click fulfillment like you you would normally do with Oberlo and AliExpress, which like I said, is one of the cons, but if you start making a really huge amount of sales, you can eventually hire a virtual assistant who can help you out with this full time. And secondly, you need really high levels of customer service with custom products because sometimes people might upload an image that is not very high resolution. So you can't really go and put that on your custom product or they might have spelled their name wrong. And then they go and email you to say, can I change the name? Or they may want to go and put a first and last name depending on whatever product it is. So you need to have really good levels of customer service and dealing with emails because like I said, somebody uploads a picture that's really poor resolution. You're gonna have to go and email them and say, we can't, put this on our custom product it just isn't a good enough image can you send us another another one and things like that so just bear that in mind but overall i think the pros outweigh the cons when it comes to drop shipping custom products because like i said if you're building a long-term brand with this method you can actually snowball and eventually make a lot of sales that you would not probably make with just your typical drop shipping store just drop shipping products that many other stores are drop shipping so now we've had a look at the pros and cons of dropshipping custom products on Shopify from AliExpress. Now we're gonna go and have a look at some potential products that you could go and dropship and have a look at a few different ones that I have found that I think are pretty interesting. So firstly, let's have a look at how to pick a product for your custom dropshipping store. And it's pretty easy to go and find a product 
that is custom or handmade that you can go and drop ship. All you need to do is just head over to AliExpress and just type in the word custom and then simply go through the alphabet. So we type in custom A, we can go and see there's lots of different custom products here, custom B, custom C, and that's all you need to do. So once again, if I just go for custom A and if I just go to custom album cover, for example, and we can go and see that we've got some of these custom gifts over here where somebody can go send a picture and they will make it completely handmade or custom made for them. Another thing that you can try is personalized. So if we just type in personalized and once again, we can just go through the alphabet A, B, C. So I'm just going to go and show you a few different products that I have found by using this method, just to give you an idea of the type of products that you can go and drop ship. So let's just go and have a look at the first one. So firstly, we've got these custom earrings. So as you can see, they're quite cheap. And if we just go over here, someone can go and upload a photo and they will go and make these custom earrings. And you can see there's some really cool ones here. So I like this one over here of a woman with an Afro. We've got flags, we've got the continent of Africa. There's lots of cool stuff that you can go and do with this. And if we just go down to the reviews, we can go and see we've got some really cool ones over here. So let's just go, this one looks pretty cool. You can see we've got this one. So like I said, this is a really cool product. Now, if we just go and have a look at the price, $2.54. Now, if we go and have a look on Etsy, somebody is selling it for 17 pounds and 50 pence. And you can see they're going for a niche. So I recommend doing this when you are selling your custom products try and target a particular niche niche so this is this is for people who like reading and like books so they're making custom book covers into earrings so that's something that you could go and do with this next up we have custom watches this is a really great one there's not really a particular niche that you could go and target but i'm sure you could think of one if you have an interest in different niches so if i use the example of soccer again you could have a soccer team on the back here and on the front now some people are going to say isn't that copyright well the, the customer uploads the picture that they want so nobody will ever actually see the image and then you just send it to the supplier they print it and send it to the customer so you can see this is a really really cool one 25 dollars for a custom watch and you can see there's some cool custom watches over here and once again if we have a look on zazzle they're selling this for 81 pounds. So that is a massive markup from $25. And the really great thing about these custom products is you can mark them up a lot higher because they are custom, of course. So because they're custom to each customer, they're willing to pay a little bit more for them. Let's have a look at the next one. So this one is a, a little bit more difficult to get into, but I just wanted to give you a few different examples. So this is a custom wedding dress. So we can see $50. Now, this one over here, if we just go and click on this, it allows you to go and input your measurements. Now, once again, if we go over to Etsy, we can see someone selling this for 350 pounds. Now, you can see here, it's very similar. You can see the way that it's all laid out. It's a very similar product. They're, getting, they're selling it for $52. They're selling it for 351 pounds. So once again, a massive markup. Now over here we have, these are custom earrings again, but these are custom name earrings. So the most expensive one is $13.20. So you can see if we just scroll down, let's go and have a look. They've got some cool ones here. You can go and change the fonts. And if we just go and have a look at how much this website here is selling them, almost 45 pounds. So once again, a massive markup for these custom name earrings, which these are basically the same thing. So these might be a little bit better quality because they're gold plated, but you could still probably go and sell these for something like 30 to $40. Again, we have a wallet over here. So this is a custom engraved wallet. So you can put the person's name on the wallet so they can go and choose which color wallet they want. And then they can just go and enter in their name. And once again, if we go and have a look over here, they're selling it for 35 pounds plus 13 pounds for the name. So that's 48 pounds. So once again, a really big markup on these type of custom products. And then finally, if we just go and have a look at the last couple of ones, we can see we've got, this is like a plaque and you can go and put your favorite band on it. So we've got this for $14 for the most expensive one. I think this is really cool. It's got the Spotify playing one or you can do it without. And once again, with these type of custom products, you might want to focus on a niche as opposed to just trying to target everybody with a custom product. So you could go for 80s music, you could go for hip hop, you could go for rock, you could go for classical music, so Beethoven and Mozart. So it, you can go and try and target a specific niche with these custom products. So we go over to this website over here, they're selling it for 20 pounds. You can see it's the exact same product. 
for £20. And over here, they're selling for £13.99. So not a massive markup on this one, but still you can make some good profit. And then over here, finally, just one last one to look at, just to give you an idea, like I said, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of these custom products on AliExpress once you actually start searching. Like I said, I just wanted to give you an idea of a few that I've picked out that I thought were pretty cool. So this one over here is a custom engraved ring. So it's uh, a signet ring, so somebody can put their name on or a letter of their name. And you can see over here, 4 99 for this ring. And once again, a signet ring over here, they're selling it for £55. So once again, probably better quality because it's gold plated or whatever, but you could probably still sell this for $25, 30 $40 around that sort of mark for a custom signet ring. So like I said, when you are going to look for a custom product to dropship, just go and research what type of price you could sell them for, and then just go and have a look at the actual quality of the product. You can go and have a look at the reviews. We can see this one's really cool. It's got an ice cream on it, which is cool. This one's got the letter. So you can do some cool things. This one's got a paw of a dog. It's pretty cool. So you, the person can upload an image that you can go and engrave onto these rings. So like I said, go and do some research and then maybe think about the type of niche that you want to target. So for example, for these earrings, maybe you want to just target flag earrings with the person's name on, or it could be a, a, a particular continent. So maybe you want to do Europe or Africa or whatever it is that you want to do think about who you're actually going to target with these custom products because if you go too broad it's going to be difficult to get sales so you could go for anime earrings so then you can target people who like anime and they want to have their favorite anime character on a set of earrings so now that we've done that let's go and have a look at picking a brand name for our custom store so let's have a look at the shopify store we will be building today so that you can start drop shipping your very own custom made products. So as you can see here, this is based around custom bobbleheads. So a customer can go and upload an image of themselves and their favorite football jersey and a custom bobblehead will be created for them and drop shipped. Now, I will be showing you how to go and create a store just like this one. So you can go and add sections like this to explain to your customers how your customized products work how you can go in embed reviews on your store so that you can go and show all of your potential customers how many good reviews you have. I'll also be showing you how you can add a gallery like this so your customers can go and click on some images of the products that you have already gone and created. And then I'll also be showing you how you can go and create your product pages that will allow your customers to go and upload images of themselves or of a soccer jersey, for example, or they can go and add their name to a product. They can go and choose the color of a product. So you have unlimited customizable options. So as you can see, we click here and we can just go and upload an image. I'll also be showing you how you can go and create all of the necessary pages such as the contact us page and the shipping policy and the really great thing about this store is it is completely 100 mobile friendly so as you can see it looks really good on a mobile as well and that is really essential when you are building a e-commerce store in 2021 i'll also be showing you how you can go and connect your domain how to create a free professional email address for your store and how you can go and fulfill orders so without further ado let's go and have a look at how we can actually start building our store to drop ship custom products so in order to pick a domain name we will be using a website called get.store and the reason that i suggest having a dot store domain name is because you can actually have a really good domain name and you don't have to be as creative you can think of something that sums up your store pretty well and they're more readily available than using a dot com domain name which most of the time are taken so I'll just show you a few examples of this so for example we've got custom watch dot store over here so if you wanted to go and sell these custom watches then you can go for that and like i said that's a nice easy domain name to remember but if you were to go for custom watch.com more than likely that domain is probably gone or it's going to be very expensive in the hundreds if not thousands of dollars and once again we have another one classic sounds dot store so if you wanted to go and sell this product over here then you could think about going for a domain name such as Classic Sounds. So once again, it's a music related product. So that would sum it up pretty well. But if you were to go for classicsounds.com, once again, more than likely that domain is probably gone. Now, I just wanna show you a few other stores. 
that are using a .store domain name just in case you are feeling a bit put off from using this. So you can see over here, we've got CR7, which is a massive brand. He's using a .store domain name for his denim website. We also have PewDiePie using a .store domain name. And we also have Emirates using a .store domain. So don't think that it's any less valuable than having a .com domain name because lots of big brands have started to use .store domain names recently. And it also just tells your customers that you are an e-commerce store right away. So they know that when they come over to your site, they will be able to go and purchase something. So when you find your domain name, you can go to add services. And what I recommend is to just go and add an SSL certificate over here for one year. Now, if you use the link in the description below, you can go and get your dot store domain name for $4.99. So that is fairly cheap. And then, like I said, once you go over to add services, you want to just go and add an SSL certificate on because that's going to mean that you get this little padlock over here in the URL, which tells your customer that your store is safe and secure, which is really essential for an e-commerce store. Once you have done that, you can just go over to the checkout and you can just go and purchase your domain name. You don't need privacy protection. This basically just stops people looking at who actually registered their domain. If you don't have privacy protection, you may just get some SEO and web design companies contacting you, but really it's not 100% essential. So then all you need to do is just go and click on place order over here, create an account, and then just go and purchase your domain. So I've already gone and purchased a domain from dot store. So now I'm just going to go and sign in. Once you have purchased your domain name, you should be brought over to your dot store dashboard. Now from here is where we can actually go and change things with our domain name. So leave this dashboard open for now because we will be using this later on in the tutorial when we go to connect our domain to our Shopify store. Now the next thing that we are going to do is actually sign up for Shopify. So if you use the link in the description, you will be brought over to this page here and you can get a 14 day free trial for Shopify. So from here, we're just gonna go and click on start free trial. Now from here, just go and enter in your email address, pick a password and pick the name of your store. So once you have gone and done this, just go and click on create your store. Once Shopify finishes loading, you will be brought over to this page over here. So firstly, are we already selling? We can just say I'm playing around. If you are just having a look, then from here, what's our current revenue? We can just start with zero and then you can go and choose your industry. It doesn't really matter. So we can just go, let's just say for handcrafts or jewelry, if it's jewelry, whatever it is. And then we can just go and click next. Now from here, we need to go and enter in our personal details. So I'm just going to go and enter in those. And then once you have entered that information in, just click on enter my store. Once you do that, you will be brought over to your Shopify dashboard. So the first thing that we are going to do from here is connect our domain to our store. In order to connect our domain to our store, we are going to scroll down to where it says add domain. So just go and click on this and then click on add domain over here. Now from here, we're going to go and connect our dot store domain that we just purchased to our Shopify store. So we're going to go and just click on connect existing domain over here. Then we're going to go and type in the name of our domain name. So if we just head back to our dot store dashboard over here, we can go to manage orders and then click on list slash search orders. And from here we can go and see our domain name. So you can see I'm going to be using this one over here, bobbleu.store. So we're going to come back over here and I'm just going to go and type in bobbleu.store and click on next. Once you click next, you will be brought over to this page. Now from here, we just need to do a few things to our domain before we can go and verify our connection. So just go and click on view instructions over here and we are going to go and scroll down until we see connect your domain name manually. So what we need to do is add a few records to our domain name. Now don't worry, this isn't anything too technical. It's really easy to do. So head back over to your dot store dashboard and from here, just click on manage orders and list slash search orders, then find the domain name that you want to connect to your Shopify store. So I'll be using this domain over here, bobbleu.store. So we're just gonna go and click on this. And then once you click on this, we're going to scroll down until we see DNS management. And then we're just gonna go and click on manage DNS. So it should open up in a new tab. Now from here, we're gonna go and head back to the instructions and just open up that tab over here. 
And now we can firstly go and add this C name record that we need to add. So we're just going to go and click on C name records over here. Now your one should be completely empty. I've already created an email address for this domain name. So that's why I already have some records in here, but your one should be completely empty. So just go and click on add C name record over here. Now where we have host name, we're just going to go and choose www. Now underneath this, where we've got domain names, we've got value, we're going to choose domain name, and then we're just going to go and put in shop shops.myshopify.com and then for TTL we're going to go and add 7200 and then just go and click on add record so now we've added our C name record if we scroll down next we need to see that we're going to go and add an A record so this long number over here just go and click copy then we're just going to go and open that that tab again go to A records over here and click on add A record now under host name we are just going to go and put the at sign so we're just going to go and add the at sign. Then we're going to go and paste that long number in here again. So let me just go and paste that in. And then we're going to once again go and choose 7200. And now finally, once again, just click on add record. So now that we have added the A record and the C name, what we can do is we can go back to Shopify over here and click on verify connection. So once you click on verify connection, we can see that our C name is perfectly fine. Our A record isn't showing up yet. And as you can see, it says some providers take a few minutes. So we're just gonna go and leave this for a little while and then we'll come back to this in a moment and we'll try and verify this again. So I have just left this for a few moments. So now we're gonna come back and just click on verify again. So as you can see, it says your domain was successfully connected. So now our domain name is successfully connected. We can actually start building out our store. So the first thing that we are going to do in order to start building the homepage for our Shopify store is to install a page builder app. Now an app for Shopify basically allows you to add extra functionality to your store. And we will be using an app to actually allow us to build all of the pages for our store as well. So just click on apps over here and then click on visit Shopify apps app store. Now the page builder that we will be building is called the Shogun page builder. So you will find a link in the description to Shogun page builder. So if you just click on that, we will, you will be brought over to the page for the Shogun landing page builder over here. Now, the reason why you might want to use a landing page builder like Shogun, as opposed to just using one of the free themes that come built in with Shopify, is because it allows you to have a lot of flexibility when you are building your pages, and then you can go and actually create something that's really unique and really eye-catching, as opposed to when you do use the free themes with Shopify. A lot of the stores are very, a lot of the themes are very limiting with what they allow you to do, and they sort of end up all looking the same. Whereas if you use the landing page builder, Shogun, you can actually create something that's really unique. So if we just scroll down over here, we can just go and have a look at some of their screenshots. With Shogun, you can pretty much drag elements anywhere you want to on your page. So you can go and add text, you can go and add buttons, images, videos, anywhere on the page. And another really great thing is it allows you to create a really great mobile site as well, which can be a problem sometimes when you use the free themes. They do look a little bit weird sometimes when you put them into the mobile view. And because a large majority of your customers and people coming over to your website will be on their mobile, you really want to focus on building your site for mobile, which is what Shogun allows you to do. As you can see, you can build it and you can go into the different views, into mobile, into tablet and into desktop, and you can move things around so that it looks beautiful on all different screen sizes. So I really do recommend using the Shogun page builder. It is $39 a month, but in my opinion, I think it is totally worth it if you want to create a store that looks really unique and stands out from all of the other Shopify stores. So we are just gonna go and click on add app now. And once you click on this, we can just go and click on install app. And then from here, it's just gonna ask you to put in your password for your store. So let's just go and click on submit now. And now from here, we can actually go and start building pages using Shogun. So the first page that we are going to start building is going to be our home page. So let's just go and click on add page over here. Now you can go and use the templates. So if you see any templates over here that you think are similar to a product that you're trying to sell. So you can see this jewelry one over here is pretty cool. We have this one over here. Now, personally, I'm not gonna use a template because I like to build my pages from scratch. But like I said, if you see a template that you think maybe is similar to what you're trying to achieve, then you can go for that. So we're just gonna start with a new blank page over here. And we are just gonna go and call this page 
home. And then it, we want to tick includes themes, header and footer. So if you untick this, it basically just means you won't have any header and footer on your page. It's just a landing page. But we want to include this so that we can have all of our contact us pages at the bottom and we can have our logo and a menu at the top. So we're just going to go and click on create a standard page. Then just give a Shogun a few moments to load. And once it has loaded from here, we can actually start building our home page. So the first thing that you might want to consider before you start building your home page and your store in general is your colors and your fonts. Now, whenever you're picking a color, you can use a website called coolers.co in order to come up with a color scheme for your store. And when you are coming up with a color scheme for, color scheme for your store, think about the type of product that you are selling. Is it feminine? Is it masculine? Is it just completely neutral? So for me, in this tutorial, I'm going to be building a store for this product. So this product is not really feminine or masculine. Anyone can sort of purchase it because it's just a custom bobblehead. So I'm just going to go with something that's more neutral. But like I said, you can just use coolers.co. Now what I recommend is just go and the first three colors of your color scheme should just be black, white and gray. So you keep it simple. And then you can just hit the space bar so that you can generate two more colors that you are going to use. So for the tutorial, I'm going to be using a combination very similar to this. So it's going to be a red and a blue. But like I said, when you are thinking about what color scheme to use for your store, you can just go and use this and it will come up with some nice color schemes that you could potentially use. So if it's a more feminine product, maybe this type of color scheme might be for you. So once you have done that, you might want to think about fonts as well. So you can use a website called FontJoy and it basically works in the same manner as coolers.co. You can just go and generate font pairings that you think look good together. Once again, when you are thinking about your fonts, think about is it feminine? Is it masculine product? So does it fit in with the kind of branding of your product? So I'm just going to be going for a very basic font pairing of Montserrat and Josephine Sands. So you can go and use that font if you want to as well. But like I said, you can go and use FontJoy to generate a couple of fonts. And when you are thinking about your fonts, one's going to be for the heading text on your website and one is going to be for the body text. So all of the other text. So this font pairing looks kind of nice, I think. So you could think about using something like that. So let's head back to our Shogun page builder. The first thing that we're going to do is create a large hero image over here displaying our product. So in order to do this, we're going to go and drag a section in here. So we've got our section over here. Now what we want to do is we want to make this a full width section. So over controls over here, we've got full width. So just hit full width like that. So now that's a full width section. So now we want to go and add an image of our product in here. Now, in order to get images of your product, and like I said, I will be building this store for the tutorial around this product, you can just go and download the images directly from the AliExpress listing. So if you want to do this, install a Chrome extension called AliSave. And you can see I've already got this over here. And then from here, you can just go and hit this download button and it will download all of the images from the product. Now, as you can see for this product, it has a watermark on it. So that's not really ideal. So if that happens to you, you can go and contact the store owner and just ask them for some images. So as you can see over here, I've just said I'm building a Shopify store from scratch. I don't currently have a website I'm selling on. Do you have maybe three to five images I could use to get the site up and running? So they've said to me that maybe tomorrow I can send it. And then I just said, yeah, that'd be great. And then as you can see, they sent me some images without a watermark that I can go and use. Now, obviously, these images are not ideal. They don't really look that nice. So once you actually do go and get some images that you want to use, you can go over to a website called remove.bg and you can just go and remove the backgrounds. So if we just go over here, I can just go, let's just pick one of these. Let's say, let's see, I'm going to just go for one of these soccer ones. So let's just go and find a good one. So let's just say this one. So I can just go and hit open and it will remove the background. So once you do remove the background, you can just go and download the image. So once you have downloaded the image, if you want to add a different background on, you can just go and use a website called Canva. So just go and sign up for Canva and then you should see your Canva dashboard like this. And then you can just go and customize the size. Now I recommend going for 1080 by 1080. So that's a square image. So if we just go and I'll just show you how you can do this. So what we can do is we can then go and upload the image 
that we just downloaded from remove.bg. So let's go and see that one without a background. If I can find it, you can see it over here. We can go and upload this image, just drag it over here like this, make it a bit bigger. And now I can go and add an element at the background if I wanted to go and change the color of the background. So this is how you can just go and create some easy product images. So we can go to position, not position, sorry. If we just right click this, we should be able to send to back. So let's go for position again. So sometimes Canva can be a bit fiddly. So let's just move this out of the way. What we're gonna do is we are just gonna go and see if we can, let's delete this image. So put your background in first and then we can go and drag our picture over the top so there we go and we can just go and make this a bit bigger so like that and then you can go and change the color if you want to so we can just go and change this like I said to whatever color we want to from our color scheme so that's a really easy way to go and just create simple images if you don't have Photoshop or anything like that now obviously depending on what product you're selling, you're going to want to have some nice images of your product. So for example, if you're selling, if you're thinking about selling these custom earrings, you're going to want to have some nice images that you can put as your main hero image on your website. So for example, this one over here and this one over here, there's some really nice ones, but obviously they're really small. So once again, you would have to go and probably contact the supplier and say, can you send me some images? Or you can just go and order the product so go and order your product in, and then you can go and take some pictures with friends and family of them wearing it and just remove the background. So we're gonna head back over to Shogun now, and we're gonna go and add those images in. Now, before we add an image in, you might wanna add a background over here. So in order to add a background, you can go and just head over to a website like graphicriver.net and just type in something like abstract background. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And you can just go and purchase one of these for really cheap. So go and have a look at something that maybe is related to your product. So you can go and use a coolish sort of background. Now you don't have to do this. You can just go for a colored background. So I'll just show you how to do a colored background and then we'll have a look at using one of these abstract backgrounds. So over here, what we can do is we can go to styles on our section. We could go to styles. And if we go, sorry, let's go back to controls. And here we have background. So we're gonna go to color and we can go and choose a color. So I'm just gonna go and pick, let's just say this blue color over here. And I'm just gonna go and paste this in here. So this would be the color from your coolest color scheme. So now that we've done that, what we can do is we can go and drag an image over here. So actually, matter of fact, let's delete that. We're gonna go and add some columns in. So now we've got two columns. So we're gonna do some text and a button this side and an image this side. So we're gonna go and drag our image in here. So now we can go and upload the image that we used of our product. So for me, I'm gonna be using one of the actual bobble heads as my background. So for you, if, for example, again, if you're selling the custom earrings, you could have someone wearing a pair of custom earrings. So this with the background removed, for example. So we're gonna go and click on pick image, upload file. And I'm just gonna go and pick one of these football ones. So I'm gonna go and choose this one. So we're gonna go and add that in there. And now we can see we have a nice hero image of our product over here. So like I said, once again, you would just follow the same process. So I got this from here, one of the ones he sent me. I removed the background using remove.bg. And then once I've downloaded it, I've gone and added it into Canva but without a background. So just completely transparent. And then over here, we can see I've just uploaded it. So there is our first image. And like I said, that's with a colored background. Now, if you want to use an abstract background, you can go and click on your section again. And then from here, we can click on styles. We can go and scroll down and we've got background over here. So we can go and click on pick image, upload files. And over here, you can see I've got some abstract backgrounds as I mentioned. So let's just go and add that in as a background. So let's just wait for that image to process. And as you can see now, it 
is covering the background like that so that just looks a little bit more eye-catching in my opinion but it depends on what product you're selling so obviously with this type of product it looks pretty cool but with other types of products maybe these backgrounds won't look as good you could just keep it clean and simple so now that we've done that next we are going to go and add some text into this column over here so we're going to scroll down and firstly we're going to add in a header over here and we're going to go and choose the font that we'll be using for our headers so over here you will see font name so i'm just going to go and type in josephine sands in here so that's going to be my heading font now you're going to go and change the color as well so i'm just going to go and change this to white like that so now we have our heading. Now, for our heading, we're going to go and put something in that obviously describes our product. So if we just click here, you can just go and directly type in. So we're just going to say custom soccer bubble heads. One hundred percent handmade. So we're going to go for that and we're just going to go and do it like this so it's like that now if you want to go and add some space to the top here so we can bring it sort of down into this area what we can do is we can go to styles and then you can see we've got margins so a margin will go and add some space around so the difference between padding is I'll just show you if we go and change this to 100 padding padding adds the space inside the element and margin adds the space outside the element so it doesn't really matter which one you use but generally if you're moving something down we're probably just going to go and stick to using a margin now as you can see when I added 100 to the top it added 100 to the bottom so in order to stop doing this because we just want to add it to the top only you've got this little link button over here so just unlink these values and then we can go and hit 100 so now it only adds 100 to the top. So that's our header over here, or our heading, sorry. So that's our main heading. Now you can go and change the font size as well. So let's say if we want to just go and change this to 50, make it bigger like that, we can also go and do that. Now I'm just gonna go and change this to, let's say 45. I think that looks just about right. Now what we are gonna do next is go and add some text underneath this. So you can go back and where it says text just go and drag that in here now for text we are just going to go and add something from the product so if we just scroll down over here let's see what we can go and add let's say we personalize faces bodies clothes hairstyles eye color and hair figure that you ask you can add blah 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 so what we are going to do is we are just going to go and create some text around this create some copy around this so we're going to say the perfect gift for friends and family simply upload your photo and we will create a beautifully if I can spell so if you can't spell then you can just go and use the spell check beautifully handmade custom bubble head so we're just going to go and say that now as you can see we're going to obviously want to go and change the font so you can highlight it choose your font family so I'm going to go for Montserrat over here so let's go for Montserrat and we are going to go and change the font weight so let's make this sort of 300 maybe a bit more 400 600 there we go so I'm just going to highlight this again and over here you can see we've got text color so if we just click on this I'm just going to go and choose white so now we can see that that has gone white so that's looking pretty cool now obviously once again this is flush up against the side of our screen so that doesn't look too great so once again we might want to go and add some padding or margin around this so if we just click on this we can go to styles over here and then we can go and add some left and right padding so let's go for 50 maybe even a bit more let's try 65 no that's a bit weird 60 so we can go and add 60 and then to the top we're just going to go and add sort of maybe 10 now we once again we can go and change the size of this as well so if we just go and choose this we can go and choose the font size so i'm going to go for something like 20 let's say 22 
20 and I'm also going to go and align this center as well so now it's like that so that looks pretty cool so we've got custom soccer bobbleheads 100% handmade so that just sums up the product and then we go into a little bit more depth so the perfect gift for friends and family simply upload your photo and we will create a beautifully handmade custom bobblehead now the final thing we want is a call to action so we're going to go over here and we're going to go and drag in a button so let's drag a button in there now the button label so the text on the button is over here so i'm just going to say start designing so that's going to be our button label so when they click on this they'll go over to the product and they can start uploading their picture now the button url don't worry about that for now that's going to be the actual product page so we will go and create that later on now over here once again we can go and add our font so i'm going to go for Montserrat once again for the font and you can go and change your font size so let's go for something like 16 and you can also go you can make the button full width if you want to i personally don't think it looks great like that so i'm just going to leave it normal then you can go and change the color of the button so i'm going to go and choose this red color let's just copy this so once again this would be from your coolers color palette so we're just going to go and paste this in here so now we can see we've got it like that now what i'm actually going to do is for the text I'm going to see if we can change the weight so here we go we've got the text weight i'm going to change it to 500 let's go even a bit thicker than that 700 so it looks a bit more it stands out a little bit more so now we can see we've got the image of our product over here and then over here we have some nice text surrounding it now as you can see as well it's there's a little bit too much space at the bottom here so we might want to go and just add some more margin to the top of this so we're going to go and make that sort of let's say 140 so now that's sort of more in the center and then we can sort of space this out a little bit more as well so if we go to styles we can unlink this maybe we could add 20 margin there and we might be able to add 20 margin to our button so we'll unlink and we'll go for 20 as well so that just makes everything look a bit more clean because there's space between the elements so that's looking really good now you can see the space at the bottom and at the top is evenly distributed so we have our main header now now like i said you can go and take your time when actually creating this you might want to go and add so if we just click on our image so let's just click on the image over here we might want to add some margin around our image as well or some padding so let's go to styles and let's go and add 100 around the actual product now you can see maybe that's that's a little bit too much so maybe let's just try for something like 30 so it's just not so close to the edges of your hero image so now that we've done that we're going to go and add another section in here so in this section we're going to do a how it works section because for most of these products people want to know what is the process and for almost all custom products the process is you upload an image or you upload your name then the people actually create it so for in this case the artists go and create this product or the artists go and create the earring or the artists go and create the watch or wherever it is that you're deciding that you're going to sell and then finally we have the end product so in this instance we're going to go back and we're going to go and add some columns in again so under here we're going to go and drag these columns in right at the bottom here and we're going to make this three columns so it's going to be upload artist gets to work and the final end product now once again we want this to be a full width area and we are going to go and add a heading above this so let's just add a heading here and this heading is just going to say how it works so we're just going to go and say how it works once again you can choose your font for your headings so we've got josephine sans so i'm actually going to go and maybe let's try it with caps like that maybe that looks a bit nicer how it works and once again we're going to go and add just a bit of margin at the top so it isn't all squashed together so let's go for 25. so now we've got how it works so what we're going to do is we're going to go and add three different images in here so we're going to go and drag an image in there we're going to go and drag an image in here and we're going to go and drag an image in here so now we've got our three images so firstly the first image is going to be the customer's photo 
So we're going to go and pick an image and we're going to go upload a file. And if I just head back over here, the first one that I'm going to upload is going to be this one over here, just of the person. So we're going to go and add that in. So now we've got this image. The next one I'm going to add is of people creating the artwork. So let's just go and see if I can find this image that I'm looking for, just to show you what I mean. So this is the one over here. So we can see this is the artist getting to work. So for you, if it's an earring you're selling, or if it's a custom ring, or if it's a custom watch, you could go and try and fi find an image somewhere on the internet that's copyright free that you can go and use, or you can go and have a look on the listing. So you can see for me, if I scroll down, I believe I got this from the listing. So you can see you, I could go and use this one over here or this one over here. So you can go and usually find them within the listing. So if we just go and have a look at the earring one, for example, maybe we can find one in the description of how they actually make this. So we're not 100%. So no, they don't have one, but that's fine. Maybe you could use something like this. Who knows? So, or you could go and see if you can find an image, or you can just take an image, a picture yourself of you creating a custom earring. So you could go and order just a blank one with you sort of creating it, or just an image of a machine or something like that. So that's that one. And then finally, we have the end product. So we're going to go once again, and I'm going to add this one. So now we can see how it works. They upload their image. The customer gets to work and then we have our final end product so for now here we're going to go and add in some headings again so let's just go and get some headings in here as a matter of fact let's delete that we're going to go and add in some columns again so we're going to go and add in three columns so you can just press this up button to make it three and we're going to make this full width and now within those columns we can go and add in our three headings. So let's add in our three headings into the columns. And the final one. And then from here, we can say, upload your photo. Let, so this one's going to be, let our artists get to work. And then finally, this one is going to be give your gift or we can say enjoy your gift so now we just need to go and change the fonts so we're gonna make this Josephine and this one as well and the final one is gonna be Josephine as well Josephine and then we can go and add some normal text underneath that so for the normal text we're gonna align this center and we're going to choose our font family Montserrat and we're just going to say upload an image of your self friend or family member as well as their favorite soccer jersey So we can say that and let's just delete this where it says text over here. So that's the first part. And then what you can actually do is you can go and duplicate things with the Shogun page builder to make things quicker. So I don't have to keep going and typing in the font family. So I've just duplicated that and you can just drag it over here. And then we can say our artists will begin creating your custom bubble head from scratch right away and then finally let's duplicate this again and we can just drag under here and we can say receive your custom bubble head and give the greatest personal gift something like that. Now, as you can see, it's kind of pushed this over with the text. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm just going to go and add some padding around this one. So let's just go into padding over here. I'm just going to go five. Or we can always just go and to make it easier, we'll just make our font a little bit smaller. So let's just go back to 16. You can just go and tab down as well. So just go and add some space like that. So now we've got our main hero image over here. And then we've got our how it works section. So upload your photo, let our artists get to work and then enjoy your custom bobblehead. So that's looking really cool. Now what I'm gonna do with this column actually, I'm just gonna go and add some margin around it, around the left and the right. So let's go and add maybe 20, just because I think sometimes the text is just too close to the edge like that. So now that we've got how it works, what we're gonna do next is we are gonna go and add some customer reviews underneath here. So let's just go and add another section here. And we're gonna make this a full, full width section. And now we're gonna go and add some custom reviews. So over here, like I said, we can go and just duplicate things to save us time. So I'm just gonna go and duplicate this. And I'm just gonna go and drag this over here in this section. And then I'm just gonna go and put reviews. Now, unfortunately, we can't use popular apps such as Luke's with the Shogun page builder. So when we are creating reviews, we are gonna have to go and do this manually. So in order to add the reviews to our homepage, we are now going to have to actually create the product. And in order to create the product, we're gonna have to go back to the Shopify dashboard. So head back to your Shopify dashboard. You can keep Shogun open in another tab and then just head back to your Shopify dashboard in another tab. And then from here, we're just gonna go and click products and now we're gonna go and click add product. So we're actually gonna go and create our product and then we can go and add the reviews to that product and then add the reviews to our homepage. So when you are creating your product, you can just go and add a title. So I'm just gonna go and open up my product over here. So let's just scroll to the top of this product. And from here, we can go and have a look at some of the things that we're gonna add in our description as well. So we are firstly just gonna name this. So I'm just gonna say custom soccer bobblehead for this product and now we've got our description so in order to create our description we are just going to take some of the information that is on the aliexpress product page now you may have just noticed that i am just creating the product i'm not importing it using oberlo or using any other third party app and the reason for that is because people are going to be uploading images that are going to be uploading their names and all of these types of things to these custom products so you can't just one click fulfill these orders which is a bit of a downside of actually drop shipping these custom products but because you can't just one click fulfill them using a third party app such as oberlo we don't actually just need to import them so we can just go and create the product straight away so like i said we are in order to write our description we are going to go and take some information from the actual aliexpress product description so over here as we can see we can we, there is a fair amount of information in here that we can copy so works handmade the work is 100 percent handmade so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy some of this and we're going to go and filter out which information is important so you can go and do this for your product that you plan to dropship so let's just go and add this in here and like i said now we can go and filter out what is actually important. So we've got material for life. We manufacture your figures from a highly resistant and versatile material, the model plastic resin, which allows your figures to last a lifetime. So we're gonna keep that in because that is obviously very important what it's actually made from. And when you are reading through these, the listing may not be in great English. So you may have to actually reword some of these. So as you can see, this one is pretty good English, which is great. So we've got works made by hand. The work is 100% handmade. We start with raw material and we work it by carving and giving it shape. So that sounds pretty cool. So we're gonna keep that as well. What we're gonna do is we are just gonna go and add some space between those. Exclusive, each work is 100% personalized and original. That is no two are the same. So that's really important as well. So we're definitely gonna keep that in. So like I said, we're just gonna go through these and if any of them I feel are not really that important, we can just go and delete them. Processing time there are detailed elaborations that require a minimum of six to 15 working days for the manufacturer. We definitely want to keep that in as well. So we can keep that in. 
Ship worldwide, we ship to all of the world. Orders are received 15 to 35 days according to different country after we inform you of your delivery. So we can go and leave that in as well, although it depends on who you're actually targeting. So with this product, I was originally just targeting the UK. So it didn't really matter if it shipped worldwide. But like I said, you can go and have a look at where your product does ship to, and then you can go and tailor that to the countries in your AliExpress listing. Figures with your face, we've got a reasonable resemblance. So what I'm gonna say is, I'm just gonna get rid of this. And then we're just gonna say, we do not make figures in 3D, but we do the work inspired by the photographs and send you, send you the details in the fullest. We always inform you of any particular theme that you have in mind. I'm just gonna get rid of this. I don't really feel like this is very important. And then we've just got measurements. So this is obviously gonna be very important. This is the actual size. The measurements of the base depend on the width of the figure. We can make larger figures at the request of the client. The measures are indicative to achieve the best result in terms of proportionality. So we can just go and leave that in. So we've done our description. Like I said, it's really easy. You can just go and copy the information from your AliExpress listing and put it in your description of your Shopify product. Next up, we have the images. So you can just go and create these as I showed you earlier in the tutorial, you can go and download the images using AliSave. Then you can go and remove the backgrounds and then you can go over to Canva and change the background if you want to, if you wanna add a colored background, or you can just go and leave it blank. So I'm just gonna go and upload some images that I have created doing this. So I'm just gonna go and click on add file. And from here, we can go and upload some of those soccer bobblehead images. So we can see here, are a few of them. So we've got this one here. We've got this one. As a matter of fact, we don't want to use that one. So we've got one, two, three. And we've got this one. And let's just see, is there any more that I might want to use? This one's pretty cool. So like I said, I've created a few. So you can go and create as many as you want. And then you can just go and upload them. Next up, we have the price. So you need to think about the price that your supplier is charging, and then you're obviously going to add your profit on top. Generally, you would want to add at least 20% profit on top. Now, for me, I believe these were around 50 pounds I paid for, for one of them, and I was charging 75. So we can just go for 74.99. And then this is cost per item. So once again, 74.99. So that's just for our our own reference as you can see customers won't see this you can also go and add variants to your product so if we just scroll down here i can go and add an option to add a second person into the bobblehead so if you get what i mean i've uploaded another image over here so we've got one bobblehead or we can do two bobbleheads like this so you can go and add variants so in order to do that we've got variants over here so what i can say is i can say number of people and then what I can do is I can go and say one or comma two so now we've got that so now we can actually go and change the prices so we can say one is 74.99 and two could be let's say 124.99 so they go and add that extra 50 pounds on top so they get a discounted rate to, in order to have two people. Now, in order to add your quantity, you can obviously add whatever quantity you need if you're drop shipping them, which more than likely you will be. You can just go and add, well, we could just say we've got a thousand each because more than likely your supplier is not going to run out. So let's just go here, we add a thousand and we'll add 1000 to this as well. Now also with your search engine listing, you might wanna just change this it's not really gonna make much difference. If you're only drop shipping one or two products, you more than likely aren't going to show up within the Google search listings, but you can always go and change this if you want to. So if we just go to edit website SEO, we can go and say something like custom made soccer bubble heads. And then you can say something like simply upload your image or your photo and your favorite soccer jersey if I could spell again 
and we will create a 100% handmade bobblehead to your likeness so it's something not too long and as you can see it's going to show up like this in the search engines so now we can just go and hit save so that's basically it for creating our product so let's just wait for that to save so now we can see we have our products we've got our listing we've got our images over here and we also have our two different variants and we've done our search engine listing as well so what you can do is you can go and change this to an active product now and once again we will just go and hit save so that means that somebody can actually go and see it if we just go and hit preview over here we can go and see how it looks now at the moment obviously nobody can upload their image so don't worry about that for now we will go and add that functionality with an app later on in the tutorial but for now what we want to do is go and add our reviews so then we can go and embed the reviews within our Shogun homepage so I'm just gonna head back here and just close this and now we're going to go and add the reviews to our product. So as I mentioned, unfortunately, we can't use an app to import the reviews directly from AliExpress when you are dropshipping these custom products because we are using the Shogun page builder. So with Shogun, it isn't compatible with Luke's, which is one of the downsides of it. But we can still go and add reviews where we need to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to apps over here and then we're going to go to visit Shopify app store. And once the Shopify app store loads, we are just going to go and type in product reviews, this first one over here. So just go and type that in. And then we are just going to go and we're going to go and install the Shopify product reviews app. So it's going to be this one over here, Shopify product reviews. So we're just going to go and grab this. And this is a completely free app. And then we're just going to go and click on add app over here. So we're just going to go and add that app to our store. So let's just wait for this to load. And then we're just gonna go and click on install app. And once you have finished installing the app, we do now just need to add a piece of code to our theme so that those product reviews do show on our product page. So we're just gonna go and copy this code snippet over here. So I'm just gonna right click and copy this. And now we're gonna go to this over here. So it says, we're gonna go to the section slash product dot template. So we're just gonna click on this liquid file and it should bring us over to this. And from here, we can go and paste that code snippet in. So we're just going to open this up. So now we're just going to go and click Control F and we're going to type in product description. And we're just going to go and see if we can find this. So right now, it's saying there are no versions of this. So let's just go and see if we can have a look in here. Product dot description we're looking for. So we're going to copy this. And we're just going to go and paste this here. So now here is the product dot description. So now once again, we can go back and copy this. So let's go and copy this code snippet. And we're going to see where we can actually go and paste this. So let's just go and have a look. Hopefully we should be able to just paste it underneath here, underneath the product description. Let's just go and paste that and hit save. And hopefully our product reviews should now show. So if we just go over to products over here, and now let's just go and view this. So preview in online store, and we should be able to see where those reviews are showing. So if we just scroll down, we can see now we've got custom reviews, and there aren't any reviews yet because obviously we haven't created any. Now, like I said, we want to go and add the reviews from the AliExpress product listing. And we can't import them directly, but we can go and copy and paste them in if you, this is something that you're interested in doing. So in order to do this, what we are going to do is we are going to just go over to apps over here. So just click on apps. I'm just going to go and refresh this. So now it should go and show we've got our product reviews app. So now we're going to go and click on our product reviews app. And from here, we can actually go and add those apps. So over here, you've got import reviews. So basically what you're gonna do is you can go and download an Excel file that you can fill out and allow you to import reviews. So if we just go and click on this where it says import reviews and then you've got download our CSV template. So just click on download CSV template, and then we can just go and open this CSV template. And as you can see in this template, it's basically got an example product and all of the things that you need to fill out. So you've got the product handle. So that's just the end 
of your product. So let me just go back over to Shopify over here and we can go and open up a product handle. So if we just go to products over here and then if we just go and open this up, the product handle, so as you can see, this one doesn't actually have it. So let's get rid of this. We're gonna go and click on the product. So click on your product and then we're gonna go and click preview and then we should be able to get our product handle. So right now it's just giving us a bunch of gobbledygook. So we don't want that, but basically our product handle is going to be the name of our product with some dashes in between. So if I just show you what I mean, basically the product handle is going to be this over here. So slash custom soccer bubble head. So that's all we would wanna put in. So if we just head back over here, where we've got example product, we would go and put this in custom soccer bubble head. So you can actually get rid of the slash. So that's your product handle. Then we've got state. So this basically means, is the review going to be published? So that's yes. If we want it to be published, then we just put published in here. Then we've got the rating. So you can go and put five stars in. Then you've got the title. So all of this stuff, you can go and copy and paste from your AliExpress listing. So if we just go over to here and I just go and click on this. And if I just go to customer reviews, so now we can just go and for example, this one over here, thank you. Not maybe not that one, that's <laughs> not the greatest. Maybe let's go for this one. So the seller tries his very best to match the figure. So let's just go for this. So now we can go and head back over here. So we've got the author, so that's the person who wrote it. So you can just go and make up a name. Let's just say John Smith. Then you've got their email. Now this is not gonna be shared anyway, so no one's gonna see this anywhere. So once again, you can just say whatever name you want to, John Smith. You've got their location, so we could go and say, let's say London, United Kingdom. So all of this stuff you can copy from AliExpress. Then you've got the body, so this is actually what they've said. So this is what I've just copied over from AliExpress. So the seller tries his very best to match the figure details. And then over here, we maybe for the title, so over this one over here, the title, that's just gonna be the first line. So we can just copy the first line. So we can just paste that in there. And then we've got the body, so that's what they've actually said. Then we've got the reply, so this is you as the store. What have you said back? So you can say, thanks for the review. And then finally, all you need to do is go and enter in the dates. So we've got created at and replied at. So you're gonna go and have to put some dates in. So make sure these dates are fairly recent. So you can see this is from 2017. So you wanna make sure the dates are relevant and make sure that the times are staggered. So not all of your reviews have been made at the same time and on the same date. So make sure you just go and change these dates. So if I just go and show you one, here's one that I filled out for the custom soccer bubble heads. And as you can see, I've got all of my titles here. I've got all of the names. I've got all of the emails. So the emails are just made up. It doesn't make a difference. I haven't put a location into any of them. I've just left that blank. So that's not essential. Then I've got all of the bodies. And like I said, these are all copied from the AliExpress. Most of them are copied from the AliExpress product listing. And then you can see I've got all of my replies. So just saying cheers, thanks, blah, 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 and so on. So that's how you can go and add the reviews. So I'm, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go and just try and embed it this way, but I don't think it's going to work. So what we're gonna do is we are just gonna go and copy this because the product handle should just be like that. So we'll copy that and we just put it in to all of these like that. So now I'm just gonna go and save this. And now we're gonna go and head back. Once you have added all of your product reviews, so you've copied them from AliExpress, we can go back to apps over here. Then we can go to product reviews. And now we can just go and add that. So once again, we're gonna go, go click on import reviews, choose a file. And then I'm just gonna go and navigate to my reviews template that I have filled out, click open. And then we're just gonna go and click on import reviews. So just leave it for a few moments. Now, as we can see, I'm getting an error here. And the reason I'm getting this error is because I've put the handle in wrong. So I've put bubble dash head. But if we look at my actual handle, there is no dash between the bubble and the head. Now, if you wanna find your handle, you can just go and click on catalog. 
So just go, I'll just show you. What we can do is, if we just get rid of this, you can go and click on the I to view your online store. And then once you have published your product, if we just click on catalog, and then we can go and click on our product, and we can see this here is the handle. So we can go and copy this, head back over here, and now I'm gonna go and paste this in here. So let's paste that into all of these, and we'll just save that. And now if we go back over here, I can go and re-import those reviews. So let's go and click Import Reviews again, and let's choose a file. And then if we scroll down, we can go and add those reviews. So let's go and click on Import Reviews again. And as we can see, the reviews have now been published. So we can see we've got all of these published reviews, mostly five stars. So now that we have added those reviews to our product and we have actually created our product, we can head back to Shogun over here. So I've got it open in the new tab, but if you have closed it for whatever reason, you can just go to apps and click on Shogun Page Builder and then reopen your page. And now we are gonna go and add those reviews to our home page. So over here, we've got reviews. What we're gonna do is we are going to scroll down and we've got a product box. So we're gonna drag the product box under the reviews and then we're gonna go and search for our product. So we've got custom soccer bobblehead, the product that I created. And we are just gonna go and click this and then we can go and select the variant, but you don't have to select a variant. So you can actually just leave this blank and then click on confirm. So now we have that product and it's basically taking all of the information from that product and it's displaying it here. So now if we scroll down over here, we've got product reviews and we can just go and add our product reviews. So now we can see we've got our product reviews here. Now at the moment, they're not sh showing, so the template isn't showing, but that's perfectly fine. We can just go and hit save, and then when we actually go and preview the page, we should actually be able to see those reviews. So I'm just gonna go and hit publish over here. So make sure that you do save your pages as you are going along. And now once we hit publish, we can actually just go and preview that and see if our reviews are actually showing. So let's just wait for that to publish. So that should have finished publishing now. So what we can do is we can click on this I and click on view live page. So if we scroll down to the reviews, at the moment it's saying there are no custom reviews, but we know we do have custom reviews because they are published over here. So don't worry if you do see this, sometimes it can just take a little while to actually load it within Shogun. So we'll just come back to this later on and have a look and they should be showing. Now one thing we might want to sort out is adding a bit of space over here. So we can head back to Shogun. So let me just close all of this and we can just go and add some margin around this. So if we just go to styles, we can go and add some margin. Let's sort of say something like 60. So that should look a lot better. So let's just go and hit save over here. So now that we have added our reviews, the next thing we are going to do is add a gallery of images of our product. So once again, we are just gonna go and duplicate this section over here. So we'll just duplicate this and we can go and drag it down here. And we are just gonna go and say gallery. Or we can go and say something like view our work. So you can go and say something like that. And what we are gonna do is we are going to go and we're gonna go and add some more columns. So let's go and add some columns in here. I'm gonna make this four columns. Once again, I'm gonna make it full width and we can just go and add some images in here. So we can just go and drag an image in there. And once again, like I said, you can use the duplicate button just to speed things up. So I'm just gonna control Z. So let's just drag that in there and duplicate and drag that one in there and then duplicate and drag that in there. And then if you wanna add more images underneath, we can just go. And if we go to columns, we can go and duplicate the whole thing. So now we've got eight images. So let's just go and start uploading some images. And I'm just gonna show you the type of images that I'm going to be uploading. And like I said, these images can be easily created using Canva and remove.bg. So I'm just gonna go and upload some of these images now. So if we just go, we're gonna go for this one over here. So we'll upload this one. So I'm gonna just show you a few and then I'm just gonna speed this process up for the purpose of the tutorial because it will get pretty boring just watching me uploading all of these images one by one. So as you can see, I've just gone and taken some of the images from the actual product over here. So from the product itself and also the ones that they sent me. So 
you can see if we scroll down he's sent me some more over here and I've just gone and created a kind of collage out of that so you can see I've got the picture of the jersey here we've got the actual product and the person so you can go and create something like this within Canva really easily and using remove.bg now I created these in Photoshop but it's basically the same thing to go and create them in Canva, which is a cheaper alternative to go and do this if you want to. So now I'm just gonna go and upload the rest of these images. So I've gone and uploaded some extra images, and as I said, I have gone and created some collages based off of the actual products and just gone and added some extra things in. And then we can see I've just got some plain ones over here. So our homepage is coming together pretty well. So we've got the main hero image over here, then we've explain to the customer how it works then we've got our reviews then they can go and actually see some of the custom products that we have already created now for the last part we just want to go and add another one of these hero images at the bottom and then all we need to do is just go and add some more call to actions so we'll go and do this so for, lastly i'm just going to go and i'm just going to go and duplicate this large section here and we can just go and drag it all the way to the bottom over here like this and we can let's just go and make let's undo that so we want to drag it so that it's not inside this column so let's go and drag it try and drag it underneath like this if we can and we'll go and create a new section let's go and drag it inside there so we're going to drag these columns inside this section and then we're going to make this section full width so there we go and finally we're just going to add some padding to the top of this so if we go to styles we can go and add let's say 100 margin something like that so now we've got a nice bit of space between that now finally we can just go and add a different image in here so i'm just going to go and pick an image so let's just go to my media library and we can just go and use let's just say this one for example like that so now we've just prompted them to go and start designing now finally what you would want to do is just go and add some of these call to action buttons so you want to go and dot these around so we can go and add one here start designing we can go and add one under our reviews like this and we could go and add one underneath here as well so let's go and duplicate this so we're going to go and add this over here so now we are constantly prompting them to go and start designing so they can click here to start designing they can click here and as they go through as I mentioned we are prompting them to start designing so that's looking really good I'm gonna go and add a little bit more padding over here so just you can always do a bit of trial and error with your padding so let's just go and make this let's say 70 this isn't the right bit sorry let's go back to styles and we're gonna to go to top, we'll go to 50, that's a bit too much, let's say 20. So now it's like that, so that's looking pretty cool. So now what we can do is we can go and save and let's just go and see how our home page is actually looking. So we're gonna to go to view live page over here. So as we can see, there is this white area here. So we're gonna get rid of this in a moment. So we've got start designing over here, then we've got how it works. Now, because we haven't published it, it still wanted to publish so we can't see all of the other bits but as I mentioned we want to try and get rid of this white space over here now that's really easy we can just go and do a minus margin so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this column here and we'll go to styles and where we've got top margin we can go and do minus 50 so now if we go and hit save and Let's just wait for that to publish. So now let's just go and view the live page over here. So it still hasn't finished publishing. Okay, that's fine. So we'll just leave it and continue on. But because we have done that minus 50, it should remove that white space at the top here. So now that we basically have completed our homepage, what we need to do is we need to just go and link up all of these buttons over here. So in order to do that, we are just gonna go and view our online store over here. So we're just gonna go and click on this and we're going to go to catalog over here so we're going to go to the catalog and we're going to go and click on our product and we're just going to go and copy this so we're going to copy this url then we're going to head back over here and we are just going to go and where it says button url we're just going to go and paste that in there to all of these buttons so let's just go and paste that into all of these 
So now, as soon as they hit start designing, it brings them over to that product. So now let's just go and hit save. Now when they actually go over to the product, they can't actually design anything as of yet. So if we just go over here, there's no option for them to upload an image of themselves or an image of their soccer shirt or anything like that. So we need to make that available. And as we can see, at least our product reviews are showing over here, which is great. So what we need to do is we need to actually go and add an app to this product page that will allow customers to go and upload custom images, their own text, and all of those types of things. So we're just gonna go and close this, and now we're gonna go to apps, and we're gonna go visit Shopify App Store, and we are gonna go and search for a product customization app. So just to go and type in custom products, and we'll hit enter over here, and we are gonna go and use this one over here, best custom product options. So just go and select this, then we're gonna go and click on add app, now this app, I believe, is before we add it, let's actually go back. This app is $8.99 a month. So once again, it's reasonably priced. So you can actually just go and this will allow you to go and add images and text to your products and add color swatches and all of these different types of things that will allow your product to be customizable. So once again, we're just gonna go and click on add app over here. And now from here, we are just gonna go and click on install app. So once you install the app, it's gonna ask you to select the plan. So you can just go for the cheaper option is that if that's what you're looking for. So we'll just go and hit activate over here. And from here, we're just gonna go and click on start free trial. Now, once you start the free trial, now we can go and add some custom options to that product. So we've got add options to a single product. So we're gonna go and choose a product. Now I'm gonna go and choose my custom soccer bobblehead product and click on select. Now from here, I can go and add any option I want to. So over here, we've got number of people so we can go and choose one and we can go and add the options to our different variations so if they choose one we're going to go and edit sorry let's get rid of this we're going to go and add virtual options so we can go and click on add virtual options over here so the first thing that we could say is upload your photo so we can go and say that and then we're going to make this an image a file upload so that will be a file upload and make it required so that means they have to upload this before they can check out so we can go and do that. Then we can add another option. And this one could be upload your jersey. So I'm just gonna go and say, not second person's jersey, upload soccer jersey. And I've just put if applicable. So they might have a picture of them already wearing the soccer jersey. So we don't actually have to make this one required. So this one can be a file upload again, and we can just go and hit okay. So now that we've done that, we can go and hit save. Now what we can do is we can go and change the options for two. So if they want to actually go and upload images for two people, then once again, we can go and add an option. So for two people, we're gonna go and add an extra option. So it's gonna be upload photo of second person. And this is gonna be a file upload again. So we're just gonna make that not required. And then we can add another one, which is gonna be upload second person's jersey, if applicable. And we can go and make that a file upload and hit save. So now they've got option one and option two. Now, one thing that I need to just quickly do, if I go to edit the Shopify options over here, it's gonna bring me over to the product. I just wanna go and add two separate images for those products, just so they know which one they're picking. So if we go down over here, we can go and choose an image. So I'm gonna just go and add a variant image. So this is gonna be for one person, and this one will be for two people. So now they know it's two or one. So I'm just gonna go and hit save on that. So now that we have actually gone and added these options, I'll just go over a few of the other options that you can add. So if we just go to add virtual options, I'll just go and show you. If you wanted to go and do these custom earrings, let's say for example, then you could say upload image for your earring. So you could go and say something like upload image. Or if you're focusing on flags, let's say, it could be upload your flag. And once again, that would be a file upload. If you're doing custom names, so let's say, let's go and find these custom name earrings these ones over here, then you would just want the person to go and type in their name and maybe they can go and choose which color gold that they want or which color metal they want. So what you can do is you can go and say, 
add your name like this and that would be a text so they just go and type it in so over here you can add the maximum so if they've got you know you don't want somebody to have a hundred letter name so you could go and say the maximum that they can have is a 10 letter name for these earrings and then it's going to be input type is text or you can change it to number so it could be add your name and then what you can do is if you wanted to go and add the option so pick your color then you could go and do check boxes or radio buttons it's totally up to you or you can do a drop down so in the drop down you could go and say gold you could go and say silver so silver and you could go and say let's say white gold so let's go and click OK and we'll hit save so now let's just go and have a look at how that would actually look so if we go over to the product over here and now we can just go and hit preview onto the product now it probably won't show at the moment so what we need to do is here we go so I've just refreshed it and now you can see they can go and upload the photos they can go and add their name and then they can go and pick their color gold silver white gold if it was the earrings let's say so that's basically how you can go and add unlimited products and then also obviously if they tick one or two it picks the image and like I changed and we've got the price change over here and that's basically how you can go and add these custom upload fields to your product so now that we've done that when they go and click on start designing it will bring them over to this page and they can actually start designing their product now the next thing that we need to do whilst this is finished publishing we need to actually make this the home page so now that this has finished publishing in order to make this page our home page we need to just go back to shogun over here so just go and click on the shogun logo over here and then it's just going to bring us over to the shogun app dashboard now from here we can go and make any page we want our home page so if we click the three dots over here next to this home page and we can go and click on set as home page and then click on set as home page like this so now that we've set this up as our home page we are going to go and change some of the styling to our actual theme because the way shogun works it still works in conjunction with a theme so this is just used shogun is just used to build the pages and then the theme is still around those pages so you'll see your footer and your header and all of those types of things so in order to actually go and change the things around our theme we're going to head back to our shopify dashboard and then we're just going to go and click on online store over here and then from here we can actually go and change our theme so we're just going to go and click on customize now i'm using the debut theme i think this is probably the best free theme that you can use so you can just stick with the debut theme so we're just going to go and click customize over here now from here as we can see we've got our home page and we can see we got rid of that large white section at the top now you may notice there's a tiny little white section but that's that's okay that's just to leave a little bit of extra space so it doesn't completely get dragged under the header so as you can see our home page is looking good our reviews have loaded now so we can see we've got our reviews over here so that's looking all good but what we want to do is we want to go and change our logo and we also want to go and change our fonts because when somebody clicks start designing over here you may notice that the fonts are still just the regular fonts that come with the theme so we can actually go and change this so I'm just going to go and click OK here and now we can go and change our fonts so in order to do this we're going to go to theme settings over here and we've got typography so you can go and change your heading fonts so I'm going to go and change this to the same fonts that I'm using within Shogun so I'm going to go and just type in Josephine over here and my main heading font is going to be Josephine Sands and I'm just going to hit select next up we have the body font so I'm going to go and change this to the Montserrat that I'm using over here so we're just going to go and type in Montserrat and I'm just going to go and select this as well so now we can see that's changed over here so if we just scroll through can see that's all looking good now we will go and change this as well so if you want to go and change the colors you can see you've got colors over here and you can go and change any colors on your site as well now for now I'm just gonna leave it as it is but you can go and change that if you want to so let's just go and hit save over here and now if I go and click start designing we should see that all of those fonts have changed so we can see the fonts over here are Montserrat and then we've got Josephine Sands 
for the headings. So that's looking really good. Next the thing that we're going to do is go and create a logo. So once again, you can just go and head over to Canva to create a logo. And we are going to go for 295 by 60. So let's just go and click create. And we're going to see how that comes out. It may be a little bit thin. That looks okay. So we can just go and create a logo now. So in order to create a logo, you can just go and create something pretty basic. So if we just go over to text over here and I can just go and if I just go and add a heading and then you can just go and type in the name of your store. So for example, I could go and type in Bobble U, which is the name of my store. And then you can go and change it to a font that you're using. So let's just go and have a look. I'm not sure if Canva has Josephine Sands. It does. So we can see we've got Josephine Sands over here. And then what you can do is we can just go and make this a bit bigger. So we're going to go and make this, let's say, maybe not 42. Maybe that's a little bit too big. 28. And if we just drag it out this way. So that's perfect. And then we can just make sure that that is aligned in the center, something like that. And if you want to, you can go and add some extra things to your logo. So for example, if I just go and duplicate this, so we've got duplicate over here, I could go and change this color. So let's just say I was to change this to a red and I could go and sort of make the font a little bit 3D like that. So that's a really easy way to go and make a logo. Now for me, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go and keep it plain and simple. So now we can just go and download this and I'm just going to go and hit download. Now, once again, if you want to, you can go and remove the background. Now you would have to remove the background of your logo only if your header is a different color. So I'm using a white header. So for me, it doesn't really make a difference if the background of my logo is white. But if you've got a header that's black or red or something like that, then you're going to want to go and remove the background from your logo so that it doesn't have a white box around it. So in order to go and upload your logo, you've got header over here and now we've got logo image. So I'm just going to go and click select and then we can just go and click on upload an image. And then from here, I can just scroll down and choose my logo over here. Now, this is just a really basic logo. You can obviously go over to Fiverr and get someone to create you a logo that looks a little bit nicer. But if you're on a budget, then you can just go and create an easy logo like that. Now, from here, we can go and let me just select that image again and hit select. You can go and make your logo bigger and smaller. So as we can see, obviously the bigger one looks a, a lot better. And you can see this is this is a pretty plain logo. So like I said, you may want to go and think about maybe paying someone on Fiverr, or you can go and design one in Photoshop or Illustrator that looks a little bit more interesting. So if we just go over to the home page, this is what it looks like now. So we've got Bobble U over here and we have our homepage. So that's looking pretty good. So now that we've done that, what we will do is we will just quickly go and change the color of these reviews. So we're just going to head back over to Shogun over here. I'm just going to go and click on this page and I'm just going to go and change the color of those star reviews because that is bugging me a little bit. So let's just wait for our page to load. And now that the page has loaded, we can just scroll down. If we just click on this over here and we should be able to go and change. So we've got the primary color over here. So we can just go and change this to, I'm going to go and change it to this red that I've been using throughout. So let's copy this and we'll just paste that hex code in there. So now we can see it's gone like that. Now you can change the star color, you can change the text color to whatever you like, but I think everything else looks okay. Now you can also go and change the font. So as you can see, my fonts from my reviews are now Montserrat, so that fits with everything else. So that's looking really good. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go and change the text color as well, just here, just so it's a bit darker, so it matches everything else. So now we can just go and hit save. And once we have finished saving, we can just go and hit publish. So now that that has published, let's just go and view our homepage just to see how everything's coming along. So we can see we've got our logo over here and then they can go and start designing. They've got how it works, start designing. Now we have our reviews and they're looking a lot better because it's all matching up with our branding. We also have start designing over here. And also, like I said, 
all of the reviews have actually loaded now so people can click through and read all of the reviews then we have all of our images over here and finally a another call to action at the bottom down here so what we are going to do next is you may notice that we don't have any other pages yet so we don't have a contact us page we don't have a refund policy or anything like that so what we are going to do is we are actually going to go and create all of those pages starting with a contact us page so let's head back over to shogun and we're going to go and click on the shogun logo to go back to the shogun dashboard so then that we can go and create a contact us page now before we actually create the contact us page in shogun the first thing that we need to do is create a professional email address that customers can contact us on so in order to do this head back to your dot store dashboard so just go to dot store get dot store and log in to your dot store account then we're going to go to manage orders and list slash search orders and then just click on the domain name that you want to create your professional email address for so we're just going to go and click on our domain name over here now from here you're just going to go and click on email and then we're going to go to manage email so once this opens up from here we can click on add user and now we can just go and create an email address for our store so you just go and enter in your name then your desired email address so you can go for something like help at your domain or contact or wherever it is and then you're just going to go and enter in an alternate email address so where emails can go in case this email address isn't working and then once you have done that we are just going to go and click on add user so now you will see the email account has been created and you can go and access this email account over here so you might want to just go and open this up and save this in your favorites so anytime somebody contacts you on this email address help at your domain it will go over to this inbox over here so now that we have done that we can go back to shogun and we can go and click on add page and we can start from a new blank page again so we'll just click on new blank page and we're just going to go and call this contact and then we're just going to go and click on create standard page once shogun loads we can now go and create our contact us page so what we're going to do is we're just going to drag a section in here and we are going to go and make this a full width section now what you can do is you can go and add a background to this so we just add a background image and i'll just go for the one that i've already used and then we can just go and add a heading in there so let's go and drag a heading inside there and we're just going to go and change this to white and to josephine sands and we can just go and say contact us and then finally we can just go and add some margin around this so let's just say 50 something like that just so it's got a nice bit of area around the text and then finally we need to go and add in a contact us form so if we scroll down we've got a form box so we can go and drag a form box underneath here and we can go and make this a contact form so we've got the form name which is just going to be contact us then it says send submissions so this is going to be our professional website that we just created so we're just going to go and copy this and paste that in there you have your success messages so i can just say thank you now you could go and say something like thanks for contacting us we will aim to reply in three to five working days my god my typing is terrible today in three to five working days so you can go and say something like that or however long you want to leave it so you've got that then you've also got your font so once again as a matter of fact i'm going to change that to Montserrat. and then you also have the success color so i'm just going to leave it as green but you can go and choose whatever you like and then you've got the error so that's just if it doesn't work so obviously you, you can go and change your font for your error message just make sure that all of the fonts are correct and then you have your label styles so once again we're going to go for that so now over here it's we go back we've got the different form elements so we want to go and just add in some of these so we've got a form text input so we can go and add that in there so this one is going to be name so we can go and put the person's name in there and then we can go and add in another one underneath that 
we can go and say email address and then we can also go and add one more and this one is going to be a form text input again so we're just going to go and add that one and we can just go and say message now over here we're going to change this one to a text area which just makes it a little bit bigger so they can go and type in their message and then finally you can go and add in this submit button so we've got the submit button like that so we can just go and you can just leave it as submit if you want to and once again you can go and change all of the styling so we're just going to go and change some of the styling for this so let's go and change it to the red color that i'm using so we've got text color and the background color is going to be this red like that okay that's done and then finally we can just see if we can just go and align it to the side like that so now it's looking pretty good and maybe we just want to add a little bit of margin to the top so let's just say maybe 10 like that so now that's our contact us page very easy now we can also go and just with this section we can go and minus off 50 to get rid of this white space over here so if we just go to styles we can go top margin minus 50 so now it's like that and we can just go and hit save and hit publish so now that we have finished publishing this these are the only other pages that we're going to create using Shogun. All of the other pages such as the refunds and returns policy and the shipping and delivery, we can actually just go and create those within Shopify. You can create them here if you want to, and that's totally fine. But what I want to show you next is how you can actually go and format your pages through using the desktop view, the tablet view, and the mobile view. So if we just have a look at this on a mobile, this looks perfectly fine so we don't actually have to do anything for our contact us page because it looks fine on a mobile it looks fine on a tablet and it looks fine on a desktop but if we actually go back so let's go and back to our pages within shogun and now we're going to go and click on our home page so if we just look at this on a desktop it does look pretty fine on a desktop but what we might want to do if is go and change some stuff on a mobile so as you can see on a mobile it looks all right still so if we scroll we can still see it looks okay but as you can see these are looking a little bit weird and the reviews look fine the pictures look okay and this looks okay but we might want to change a few things around so for example we might want to have the image up here so the way that we can actually do this is we can go and turn off certain sections based on the screen size so if we go to columns over here what we can do is if we go to style we can scroll all the way down and as you can see you can click and toggle on and off what screens you want it to show so we can say we want it to show on wide screens and desktops so let's just go and have a look at how it looks on a tablet so on a tablet it looks a little bit weird as well you can see some of the formatting is a bit funky so what we're going to do is we're going to go and turn it off for a tablet and turn it off for a mobile so now we are going to go and duplicate the section and with the new duplicated section we are going to go and edit this so that it is for a mobile and a tablet so let's go into the tablet view now and so go back into desktop sorry let's go back into desktop and then we're just going to go and change this through the styles so click on styles we're going to scroll down and we're going to turn it on for tablet and mobile and turn it off for desktop and widescreen so now let's go into tablet view and we can actually go and edit some of this to make it look better on a tablet so firstly what we are going to do on a tablet we are going to go and change all of this padding over here and the margin sorry so let's get rid of some of this margin so we'll make it like a hundred maybe even less let's just say 50 so that looks pretty okay and we can actually go and add some right and left padding so maybe 10 something like that and we are going to go and change this to let's say 30 and then we can just go and click on this and let's see if we can just maybe just have to change the font size so if we go to the controls we can change the font size to let's say 30 so that looks a lot better then we can go and change the font size for this as well so i'm going to go and change this to let's say let's try 12 maybe a bit bigger than that maybe 16 maybe 18. so let's see how that looks so now you can see on a tablet 
it's starting to look a lot better. So what you can do is once you have done that, you can just go and duplicate this section. So if we just click on this and we can just go and click duplicate and we can just go and drag this all the way to the bottom. So let's just drag it here and then we just are going to make it a full width again. So we just click on this and we just click full width. So now we've got it like that. So now I just want to double check everything's still looking okay. So we've got it like this on a desktop. So it looks fine on desktop. Now for this bottom one, we're gonna change this as well. So we'll go to click on the column. We'll go to styles and we'll just make this only available on a desktop. So we we'll turn it off for tablet and for a mobile. So now if we go into tablet view, we can see we've got it like this. So that's looking good. Now you can see one of the start designing buttons is missing. So we can go and just duplicate this and we'll just drag it over here. And now we can just go and make this strictly for a tablet as well. So we can go and turn it off for everything except for a tablet. So that's perfectly fine. And then finally, we can go and change this image if we want to. So if we just go to pick image and we can just go and pick this one so that it's the same as our desktop one. So that's how it's gonna look on a tablet. Now let's go and have a look at the mobile view. So you can see on the mobile view, it's looking all right, but we might want to just change a few things once again, like I said. So what we can do is we can just go and duplicate this again. And now that we have duplicated it, we can go to styles and we can just go and turn it off for a tablet and have it only on a mobile. And then for this one, we can go and turn it off for a mobile. So we'll just do it like that. So now if we go into the mobile view, we can see it's like this. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna drag this up here like this. And then I think I'm going to drag this above here. So now we've got the heading, a picture of the image, and then some information and then the button to start designing. So you can go and do something like that. Let's play around and see if we was to do this, how it would look. That looks pretty good. So we can go and do something like that for a mobile. And then obviously we want to sort this bit out. So we will do that in a moment. But like I said, if we just scroll down to the bottom, this one over here is looking pretty decent anyway. So if you want to do go and change it, once again, you can just go and do the same thing. So duplicate, make this one over here strictly for a tablet. So we can go and turn it off for a mobile and then make this one over here strictly for a mobile. So we can go and turn it off for a tablet. So now we're in mobile view. When we go into mobile view, once again, you can go and move things around. So we could move the image here like this. And also we can go and duplicate this button and make this one strictly for a mobile. So we go to styles, we can turn it off for everything except mobile. So now it's like that. So now finally, the last bit that we want to go and change is going to be this how it works section. So we're gonna go and change this. So what we're gonna do is, once again, we are just gonna go click on the columns like this and we're gonna to go to styles and we are just gonna go and turn it off for a mobile. And now we're gonna duplicate it and we'll go to styles and we will turn it off for everything else. So let's turn it off for all of these and we'll leave it into mobile view. And then for this one over here, the columns with the text in, we're gonna do the same thing. So we'll go to styles. We're going to turn it off for a mobile. Then we will duplicate it. And with this section, we are gonna turn it off for everything else. So turn it off for all of these and turn it on for a mobile. So now let's go into mobile view and we see we've got how it works like this. And we're just going to simply drag these underneath here like this. So now we can drag this. Let's just grab this and drag it here. And then we can grab this one, drag it underneath our art section like this and this one as well underneath here and then finally this one will go underneath here like this 
and then we can actually just get this column and delete it and now that's it you can see this is how it's going to look on a mobile so we've got our mobile view how it works like this then we've got start designing we've got our reviews and then we have our images and then finally we have a final call to action at the bottom on a tablet it looks good as well you can see and on a mobile sorry on a desktop it looks good as well so that's the really great thing about using the shogun page builder is that you can be really flexible with how you go and create your designs your page designs depending on what device so now that we have done that we will continue creating some of the other pages such as the terms of service the privacy policy the refunds and all of those pages that are necessary for your e-commerce store so let's just go and hit save and then we will just go and publish this page as well. So let's just go and publish it. And once that is publishing, we can just head back to our Shopify dashboard over here. And from here, we can go and create those pages. So in order to create those pages, we can go to settings over here. And then from here, we're gonna to go to legal, where it says manage your store's legal pages. So click on manage your store's legal pages over here. And then from here, what we can do is we can go and create the refund policy, the privacy policy, the terms of service, and the shipping policy. So what you need to do is click on create from template. And what it will do is it will just go and generate a basic template. Now from here, go and make sure you read through this and make sure in all of the information is correct. For example, your contact email. So you can see this one's not correct for me because we just went and created that professional email address. So I'd want to go and change this to help at bubble you dot store so we're going to go and change it to that and then we can also go and add a hyperlink to this so if we just highlight this you can go and hyperlink this and link it to your email address so help at bubble store dot you and click insert link and then you're going to go and do that as well so if we just go and copy this we can replace this one over here now you can go and offer a 30 day refund policy, but I believe depending on what country it is, so in the UK, I believe a 14 day grace period is needed. So we could go and change this to 14. But like I said, depends on where you're selling and what the grace period is. And then obviously this is just regarding damages and things like that. So you've got re returns and refunds. So you might want to go and put in here that they have to go and pay for their own shipping if they want to return it and things like that. So like I said, just have a read through this and make sure that you're happy with it. Then we have the privacy policy. So once again, we can go and click on create from template. Now in here, basically what you want to do is you want to delete any areas that are in the square brackets and in caps. This is basically prompting you to delete or keep in what you want. So for example, for this one, it's saying collect automatic data is collected automatically from your site using cookies, web beacons, tags, or pixels. So it's saying add or subtract any other technologies. So if you don't use web beacons, for example, you can delete this. Or if you're not using any of them, then you can delete all of it. And then you finally would delete this bit of text as well, of course. And then over here, as again, you can see that the business purpose for collecting this data is shared with our processor Shopify. So then you can say add any other, any other vendors who this is shared with. So you could go and put your supplier in here. We do share your contact information with our supplier from in order for you to receive your goods at your address, something like that. So if we just go and delete this, we can say something like we also share your address information. with our supplier and shipping provider in order for you to receive your goods. So you can go and say something like that in order to cover yourself because you are drop shipping. Once again, over here, you've got some other information. So any other payment types you accept, if you're using Amazon Pay or Apple Pay or anything like that, you can put that in here. So like I said, just go and have a read through this and make sure all of the information is correct that you are using through your Shopify store. Then we have our terms of service. So we can go and create this one from a template. So once again, the terms of service, you wanna just read through. 
make sure that you are happy with everything. A terms of service is basically how someone uses your website. So you can go and have a read through this and make sure that no one is stealing your images for copyright purposes and things like that if you're creating custom images and things like that. So you might want to go and have a read through that. And then finally, you have the shipping policy. Now, for the shipping policy, they don't have a template because obviously it's down to you to decide on your shipping. So for your shipping policy, you can just go and say something like our store ships to all major North American and European countries as well as so just go and check with your supplier, obviously, which countries that the item can be shipped to. Generally, it will be all of these. And then you can say we do not ship to the following countries because generally they don't ship to these countries. And then just add a disclaimer in here because your items may take a little while to actually be created. So you can just go as, as our items are completely handmade. It takes eight to 10 days to create your items and then shipping times vary depending on which country. So once again, go and check with your supplier how long it takes to actually ship the items to each country and then what you can express to your customers if it takes 10 days to create the item and 10 days to ship it then they will receive it in three weeks if it takes 15 days to create the item then they're gonna to have to wait a little bit longer so just make sure you go and put this disclaimer in here as well so that they know that the item is going to arrive you know a few weeks after they order it so then once you have gone and finished all of these we can just go and hit save so now we have gone and saved that. We've created all of our pages. Once you do go and create all of these pages, the contact us and all of your legal pages, we can now go and create our menus for our footer and for our header. So we're gonna to go to online store and we're gonna to go to navigation over here. Under navigation, we've got the footer menu, we've got the main menu. So let's go and do the footer menu first as we've just gone and created the pages. So we'll go to footer menu over here and firstly, you can just go and delete this search item if you want to. So we just go and delete this. So now we're going to go and add some menu items. So firstly, we're going to go and add the contact us. So we're just going to go and put contact us in here. Then we're going to go and just search contact us. So we've got contact over here and we're just going to go and hit add. Next up, we're going to go and add in the terms of service. As a matter of fact, let's add in the shipping policy. And then we're just going to go to, if we go to policies, we should have our shipping policy in here and click add. Then we're gonna go and add our refund policy. So we'll add that and we will go to policies and add the refund policy. And then we can go and add our privacy policy. And once again, we can go to policies and add our privacy policy. And finally, the terms of service. So we've got, let's type in terms of service and we'll go to policies and add terms of service. Now I just wanna double check that I added the contact us page correctly. So let's just get rid of this. If we go to pages, yes, we've got contact here. So let's just click apply changes and then we can just go and hit save over here. Now for your main menu, you might want to just add a link that brings your customers directly over to the product page so they can start designing. So we're gonna to go to navigation again. We're gonna to go to the main menu. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and delete the home and we're gonna delete the catalog. And we're just gonna add a menu and we're just gonna call this start designing. And I'm just gonna go and add my product here. So we're gonna add our product and we're just gonna go and click add and save menu. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go over to our online store and actually add those menus. So if we just go and click customize over here. So now as you can see, we've got start designing over here. So if they just go and click on this, we can see it brings them over here and they can start designing their product. And if we just go back, let's just go and have a look at the footer. So now we can see in our footer, we've got contact us, shipping, refund, and so on. So if we just go to footer over here, what we can do is can just go and change this to quick links and we can just change this to something like help. So let's just go and put it like this. And then you've got your newsletter over here so they can go and subscribe. So let's just go and have a look at how that looks on a mobile as well. So if we scroll down, we've got the contact us, shipping policy, blah, 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 and so on. So now let's just make sure. So as you can see, make sure you go and view your page using the actual theme itself as well, because this will tell you if there's any defects in your page. So as you can see, this over here, this button is showing up because it's underneath. So what we need to do is go back to our page and actually just go and delete this button here within Shogun. So what we can do is we can head back to Shogun. And if we just scroll down, let's just go into mobile view 
and we should be able to tell if you can see underneath there it is so just be careful with things like that when you are using Shogun so if I just click here you can see they've got this square box if I click on the square box you can see the button is showing but it's underneath this so what we can do is we can just go and delete this so now that is completely gone so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and duplicate this button again and I'm just going to put it underneath here and once again I'm just going to make it strictly for a mobile like this so now the button underneath is still there so let's just move this button up here and now let's just delete it so now it's out of the way so for some reason I believe that this is happening is because of the margin so just make sure you go and iron any errors out so because we've got this minus 50 margin what we can do is if we just set this to zero we can go and add 20 to it so now we can see that button is showing up so like I said just be careful with some small things like that because they can go and cause problems with your website of course so if we just go and hit publish now what we can do is once that has finished publishing we can just go back over here and if we just go and refresh this now we should hopefully see this button disappear so I've just gone and refreshed this so let's just go back to mobile and now we can see that it has disappeared so that looks a lot better now also as you can see there's not much padding underneath this so we might want to go so on here it shows that there is but that's because it's different when you're actually creating it in Shogun sometimes it can show a little bit differently depending on the way it reacts with your theme so what we can do is we can add some bottom margin to this so bottom padding or bottom margin let's go and add some bottom margin let's just go and add 20 as a matter of fact let's go and add 30 so let's just add 30 to that and once again we can hit save and once it's saved we can go and hit publish again so now when we refresh this there will be a bit of margin underneath here and as you can see because I didn't save this it got rid of that quick links so once again I'm just going to go and change this to help and we can just go and hit save so now let's just go and see if we go and click on shipping policy we can see we have our shipping policy if we click on privacy policy we have our privacy policy so all of those pages are working just fine and if we go and click on our contact us page we can see we have our contact form so that's perfectly fine now you might also just want to add some text in on your contact us page just saying we will aim to get back to you in three to five working days even though when they do click submit that message comes up as well and then if they click on this they can still go and start designing and let's just go and click back onto the home page our home page is looking good now once again as you can see we might want to go and add some margin to this button as well so if we go back over here let's just scroll up and once again we can go and add 30 margin to the bottom of this so let's just go to margins we can add 30 on here save and then once it has saved we can just go and hit publish and once that has finished publishing we can just now go and refresh this and hopefully we should be able to see that all of those changes are coming up so let's just go and have a look so obviously like we've shown it looks fine on a desktop so let's just go into the mobile view so it must still just be finishing publishing so let's just give it a few moments now also as you can see I did delete the start designing button from underneath here so when you are going and making some changes in Shogun just make sure you check your website in all of the different views to make sure that everything is working and you haven't deleted anything by accident so if we just go back into this view now we can see that I did delete that button so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and duplicate this and we're just going to go and drag it underneath here and I'm just going to go and make this strictly for the desktop so we'll just go and leave it like that now another thing that we can do I just want to quickly show you a few other things in Shogun you can actually make these images clickable so if you click on these and we scroll you can see image is clickable over here so somebody can actually go and click the image if you add a new link and it takes them over but what we can do is we can go and click on open in lightbox so if you go and do that 
basically that just makes the image it allows the user when they click on the image to see a bigger version of it so i'm just going to go and change these to open in lightbox so what i would recommend is to change all of them to open in lightbox and then i'll just show you what i mean so if we just go and save and hit publish once again and let's just wait for that to publish and now that that has finished publishing once again we can go back over to our store let's just go and refresh this once again and now if we scroll down we should be able to see that you can see this is open in lightbox so i just think that's just a cool neat little thing to have because you can see these ones i didn't do it so they can't open up and as you can see this button is back and now if we go into the mobile view we can see we've added some margin to this button here it just makes it look a lot cleaner and it's looking good on a mobile and once again people can go and open these with the light box like that like i said i didn't change it for these ones so that is how it's looking on a mobile it's looking pretty good obviously on a tablet it looks good on a desktop it looks good they've got start designing up the top here now what we're going to do next is we are going to go and make this he header sticky so when they scroll they will see a sticky header and that will just prompt them to start designing as well when they are on a desktop so in order to make our header sticky we are going to have to add some code to our theme so i'll leave a link in the description to this page and from here we can actually go and copy this code so we're going to scroll down and like i said i'll leave a link to this page and when you get here just copy this first box of code now what we are going to do is in shopify we are just going to go back to our shopify dashboard and then under themes we're going to go to actions and we are going to go and click on edit code over here now from here we are going to scroll down to assets so go and click on your assets folder and we're going to find theme.css so click on theme.css and then from here we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and we are just going to go and paste that code in there and then just go and hit save so now that we have gone and saved that we are going to add a second piece of code so we're going to go and copy this second piece over here and now we're going to go to the theme.js folder so if we just go and open up theme.js over here and from here once again we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and we're just going to go and paste that code in there and hit save so now that we have gone and saved that code we are just going to go and click on the little eye icon to preview our store and hopefully we should be able to see that our header is now sticky so like i said it just prompts them to start designing as they scroll so that's a really extra handy little thing to have so now our store is basically together we have everything and as you can see it's looking pretty good now i've just given you the building blocks to actually go and create this but of course you can spend a little bit more time on coming up with the branding making it look nice taking pictures depending on what you're selling and all of those types of things so the last thing that we are going to focus on is actually fulfilling orders when they start coming through so in order to look at how to fulfill orders with your custom products firstly we are going to go and create a test order so in order to create a test order what you can do is from your shopify dashboard you can go and click on discounts over here and you can go and create a 100 percent off coupon code so then when you go over to the checkout you can just go and you won't be charged anything so what i have done is i have gone and created a product so as you can see in the cart over here we've got the two images that the customer has uploaded so their photo and their soccer jersey and then we've got the name and the color so now we are just going to go and check out now when you go to check out it's going to ask you to pick shopify plan now don't worry you won't be charged when you pick your shopify plan you still have your trial but you can just go and choose a shopify plan so that you can go and test this now over here you're going to go and enter in your 100 off discount code so we're just going to go and put 100 off in there and click apply and now we should see that it's gone to zero so now that we have done that i'm just going to go and fill out some dummy information over here so i've just gone and added some dummy information over here so now we can just go and click on continue to shipping now from here we're just going to pick the standard shipping method which is the free one and just click continue to payment now of course because we've got our 100 percent off code we're going to see your order is free so no payment is required so we can just go and click on pay now then it will just say your order is being processed and as we can see 
the order has been processed. So now that we have gone and created that practice order, we can go over to orders here and I can go and show you how you can go and fulfill these orders. So when an order comes through, it will look like this under orders. So we can go and click on this over here. And as you can see, we've got the photo that the customer has uploaded, the jersey, and then we can see the name and the color. So depending on what product you sell, you're gonna have different options here. So different customizable options for your product. Then all you need to do, as you can see, if I just click on this, it actually goes and it downloads that file. So all I would need to do if it's an image is then just go over to your AliExpress supplier over here. And then when you go and make the order, so here's the custom bubble head. When you go and make the order, you can just go and send them over the images. And also if it's a customizable product in terms of adding a name. So for example, if we have a look at these earrings over here, that's gonna be a name. So you can just go and send that over to them or a font or whatever it may be. You're just gonna go and send that over to them through the chat. So through the chat over here, once you've made your order. Now it can take a little bit of time to go and fulfill these orders. It's like I said in the beginning of the tutorial, it's not a one click fulfillment like you might do with a Burlo. So it's a little bit more time consuming, but once you start getting a huge amount of orders, you can just go and hire a virtual assistant from Upwork who can actually go and help you with this. So they'll just be downloading all of the photos or the names and things like that and sending them over to the supplier for you. So like I said, that is how you can go and fulfill orders. So now we've had a look at creating the site from scratch and fulfilling orders. The last part of the tutorial, I just want to show you how you can go and create really cool video ads for these custom products so that you can start marketing your website on Pinterest, on Facebook, Instagram, or wherever it, wherever it may be. So in order to do this, we will be using a video editing tool called InVideo. And InVideo has loads of different templates that you can use to go and create a video ad. And it's really easy to use. You don't need any prior experience with video editing. And the really great thing about InVideo is that it's really reasonably priced, especially compared to other video editors, for example, Premiere Pro. So as you can see, you can go and get it for $20 per month or you can go and get it for $120 for the whole year. But if you do use my link in the description, you will get 50% off. So that means you can get it for $10 per month or you can get it for $60 for the entire year and you can go and create as many different video ads as you want using their different templates. So I'm just gonna go and show you now, now how we can go and create a really simple video ad for our custom products Shopify store. So let me just go and log in over here and we're just gonna go and click continue. Now, once you are logged in to your InVideo dashboard, you can then go and have a look at the different categories. So as I, as I said, they've got loads and loads of different templates. So just have a look around and see if you can find one that's similar to a product that you're selling. But like I said, I'm gonna show you how to use it from scratch. So we are actually gonna go for a 15 second bite size ad. So let's just go and click on this over here and then it will go and show us all of the different templates. So because we, you may be wanting to market your store on Facebook or on Instagram, for this tutorial, we are gonna go and use a square template. So let's just scroll across here. There are quite a few different ones that you could potentially use. I'm just gonna go for this one over here. So we're just gonna go and click on this template. And I'm just gonna go and click on use this template. So just give it a few moments for the template to load. Now, once the template has loaded, you will be in the InVideo video editor. Now don't worry, don't be too overwhelmed because it is really easy to use. Over here we have the layers. So the layers are basically all of the different elements over here. And as you can see, some of them are locked. So you're going to want to unlock all of these different layers over here. So then all of them are available and you can edit every single one of them. Now you can just go and delete things as and where you need. So for example, I don't want this to be a Christmas themed ad, so I'm just gonna go and delete these trees. So we've got a tree here. So I'm just gonna go and hit the delete key and get rid of those. We have an overlay here, which has this sort of Christmassy snowy effect. So I'm just gonna go and delete that as well. Now you have the background. So if you wanna go and change anything and edit anything. So if we just click on this, I can go to edit and I can go and edit the colors to whatever I like. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go and add my own background. So you can go and upload images. So if you just go to upload over here, you can go and upload an image 
And as you can see, here's the background that I use the same one on my website. So I'm just gonna go and drag that in there and I'm just gonna make it the same size as the canvas like this. And we just drag it into the center. Now, as you can see, the image of the kid went away. So I can just go and move this. So let's just go and see where it is. So we're gonna to go to layers now, and you can see this is media three. So I'm just gonna go and drag this. So now that kid is back here again. So next up, I want to go and replace this image over here with an image of my custom product. So I'm gonna go and replace it with this image of this guy over here. So let me just delete that again. And the way you can do this is you just drag this on here, and then we can go and hit replace so now that has been replaced with him now i'm not going to go and include my logo but you can go and put your logo in there if you want to so once again all you'd have to do is upload it and drag it in here and it would replace it i'm just going to go and delete this now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to go and move some of the elements around and start changing some of the text so first i'm going to move this element up here and we're going to make it a little bit bigger then i'm going to go and change the text to custom bobbleheads. I'm going to go and change it to that. Now we can just drag this box, make it a bit bigger. So now it fits right in the center like that. Now we can go and make this a little bit bigger as well once again. So maybe something like that. And we can just drag it so it's in the center again like that. Now I'm just going to go and change the text color. So over here, once again, if you go to edit, you can go to colors and you'll see text color. And I'm just going to go and change it to black like that. So as you can see, what you want to do is you want to keep the branding of your store. So if we would go and we go to style over here, we can go and change the font as well. So I could just go and type in Josephine Sands, the same one that I'm using on my website. And I can go and do that. So as you can see, it's cutting it off a bit now. So we can just drag it into the center again. So now where it says sell, I'm just going to go and change this to upload your photo and we'll go and drag this out and now we want to go and change the font size of this so we're going to go to style font size I'm just going to go and change this to 70 and once again I'm going to go and change the font to Montserrat the same as my website and we're going to go and change this to let's just say bold let's see how that looks so that looks pretty decent but still it's a little bit too big so we're gonna go and change this to 60. So now we've got it like that. So we can go and make the box smaller so we don't have all this space around it. So let's go and do that. And now we can go and drag that up the top here. And once again, we can align it to the center. So now we've got upload your photo. Now we've got up to 30% off. I'm just gonna go and delete this. And then I'm just gonna go and change this to let our artists get to work. So I'm just gonna go and change it to that. And we can just bring this over to the side here. And then I'm just gonna go and change the style. So we'll just go and make it light, just like that. Upload your photo, let our artists get to work. And we'll just bring this down a little bit like this. And then finally over here, we can just go and change this to bubble you dot store like this and we'll just drag it out a bit and we'll just bring that into the corner like that so now we've got that and finally i'm just going to go and drag this in here so let, let me not replace we're just going to go and drag it in add as a layer and we're just going to go and put that there and make it a little bit bigger so that they can clearly see it. So maybe what we're going to do is let's just bring this up a bit like that. And then we can bring this up a bit and then we can bring this up a bit. So now they can clearly see they upload the image of this and here's their custom bubble head. So that looks cool. And what we're gonna do is you can go to image animation and you can go and choose which one you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and add an animation where it comes in from the left and then 
within three seconds. So if we just go and play that now. So as we can see, that's just fading in. So I don't want it to fade in. I want it to actually, so we've got shift in from left. So I actually want it to just come straight in, not fade. So let's have a look which one we want. Slide in, that's the one I want. I want it to slide in. And then if we go to image resize options, let's just go and have a look. We don't want it to get cut off. So we can just go and leave that. So let's go and play that again. And let's just try again. So as you can see, this image was just getting cropped out. So I just want to go and have a look. So let's just go and add this to three seconds. What we're going to do is we're going to go to image resizing options. And we're just going to go and say stretch to screen. Let's go and see what that looks like now. And as you can see, it's not getting cut off now. Now, the last thing I want to do is just change the music. I feel like this music is a bit boring. So within NVIDIA, you have loads of different core music that you can go and use. So you can just go and have a look. So if, let's just say if we were to go for something cinematic, let's go and see if we can find something cool. Maybe not cinematic, maybe we want to go for some hip hop. Let's go and have a look at this and we can go and see if we can find something cool. So let's see if we can find So let's just say something like this, for example. So you just go and click the plus button and we can go and add that to our video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just drag this back here, drag this to the end, and then we're just gonna go and grab this. And just, if we click edit, we can just go and trim this. So we're gonna trim it. Nobody. So I'm just gonna go and trim this now all the way to the end. So I'm just gonna go and trim this so it's here. And finally, we can just go and play our video. So let's just go and see how it's all looking and coming together. So let's just go and hit play scene. So as you can see, that's a really cool and easy video now. Not 100% sure about the music, maybe it doesn't fit the style of the site, but like I said, I just wanted to show you how you can actually go and do this. So now you can go, all you need to do is just hit export over here. So just wait for the video to export. And once your video has finished exporting, all you need to do is click download. So we can just go and look at that one more time. So as we can see, that is pretty cool. So like I said, you can go and download this and use this for Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube ads, whatever type of ads that you want to use, or if you're just going to go and promote it on social media for free. So that is it for today's tutorial, guys. I hope you did enjoy the tutorial and now you are confident to go out there and start dropshipping your very own custom products. Please give the video a massive thumbs up if you did enjoy the video. Share it with anybody else that you think might be interested in setting up their own store to dropship custom products and I will see you all in the next video.